Hello, Nephew community, and welcome to our Hot Topics in Nephrology podcast. We're featuring, as always, Mark Newman, editor and writer specializing in the field of nephrology for over 30 years. Uh, I'm Aaron Immel, the field medical affairs uh, liaison covering this podcast from Nephew. And today we're going to be addressing the nursing shortage part two. If you tuned into our prior episode, Mark shared some insights that uh, we've just seen bubble up over the past year or so with the global nursing shortage and in particular how it's affecting the field of nephrology. So we started that discussion both on a national level and in nephrology. In this installment, Mark is gonna fill us in on what he learned at the annual symposium of the American Nephrology Nurses Association or ANNA that was held in May in Fort Worth, Texas about how we might address this shortage. So we know the issue What is it that can be done to solve this uh, substantial problem? Uh, Before we do that, though, Mark, I think we need to do a quick recap of what we discussed on the first podcast covering this issue. Okay, sounds good, Aaron. Um, As we noted in our first installment of this podcast series, uh, the nursing shortage is a big problem around the country. And uh, most everybody agrees is already simmering. Um, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we already had problems finding nurses at that time. But here are some stats that uh, we shared at the last podcast that I think are important. More than 100,000 nurses left the workforce in 2021, which is just this past year. Um, That shrinkage was part of a 1.8% drop in the nursing uh, workforce. And that's the largest decrease in four decades, uh, 40 years. Uh, that's that's an amazing and an unfortunate statistic. And the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts we will have a need for more than 275,000 additional nurses between 2020 and 2030 for direct patient care. And we're already looking at 2003, 2023 rather, next year. So this is already starting. And that's a lot of what we heard at the nursing meeting. We've been hearing it online, of course. Um, so it's a, it's an ongoing issue. Yeah, Mark, thanks for that information. I mean, those are pretty staggering statistics from a national level, but obviously this impacts local practices, nephrology practices, large dialysis organizations, et cetera. So how do we drill that information down to a local picture and really put a face on the problem and the, how this is affecting the kidney care community? Well, here's a good example from a colleague of mine who is the CEO of a surgery center here in Chandler, Arizona, where I live. They have had an operating room nurse position open now for three months. The position is a Monday through Friday shift, no calls on weekends, pays about $50 an hour, and includes a $7,500 sign-on bonus. She has had some recent applications, and while she's grateful for those, many of these nurses are not qualified. She's looking really for somebody that's got some more expertise in this area. So in some respects, I guess the good news is that she's getting the applicants, but she's not finding the nurses that fit into this position. We've also heard, of course, at conferences this past year that both Fresenius Medical Care and DeVita have hundreds of nurses and nursing positions open. And um, that seems to be a chronic problem. Uh, we'll, call, we'll talk a little bit more about that at the when we cover the ANA meeting. But you know, as we noted last month, the aging and the pandemic are two important reasons for the shortage, and that goes across all medical specialties. But nursing schools also turned down eighty thousand candidates in two thousand nineteen and two thousand twenty due to not enough teachers and classroom space. So even if we were able to, even if half of those um, nursing candidates complete the program, that would give us at least 40,000 more nurses to help them fill those vacancies. So it's a, it's a problem at the top in terms of the aging population of nurses. It's a problem at the bottom where we're not getting enough candidates to go into nursing schools. So that creates this huge gap in between. I think that's a, a major issue. Yeah. And I think it's really telling that it's hard for this uh colleague of yours to find a good candidate at that pay and sign on bonus. I mean, just, just knowing my wife's a nurse and I mean, that's well above and beyond even the last five years, what, what a standard job would offer. So pretty, pretty compelling. So at the A&A meeting uh, in Texas, uh, what did you learn there in regards to this issue and, and anything that's being done to address it? Anna has some challenges ahead. 
They want to be able to control the nursing shortage and manage it. Uh, in fact, they recently have been re re they have rebuffed discussions about opening home dialysis training, for example, to other allied health professionals because they believe it is a task that only nurses should be managing. But that means they need to produce some solutions in terms of the shortage. They do believe that healthcare institutions need to give nurses more control of their work environment. And these are some of the comments that they made during the meeting. That includes allowing nurses to create their own schedules, see improvement in compensation and benefit packages, provide greater access to furthering their own education, advocate for loan repayment and forgiveness programs, and I think this is key, allow for exposure to specialty nursing rules during undergraduate and graduate nursing education. That is a great way to expose nursing candidates to subspecialty areas in kidney care, like transplant, home dialysis, and care for patients with CKD. It might make this specialty more appealing in terms of when nurses are thinking about what they want to do in terms of their career, they might look at nephrology and look at these aspects of it. But the problem, just like we see with nephrologists, is that during these um, nursing and these fellowship programs, um, Nurses and nephrologists don't get exposed to other sources or other means of providing kidney care. And so they tend to go into the profession thinking that all patients should be dialyzed in center and uh, transplant in home are certainly an option, but not a priority. Uh, and I think that's a problem because ultimately, if they're not exposed to these other modality specialties, they're not going to see the potential excitement or interest in nephrology. And it could also point to the fact that, as we've talked before in our podcasts and our webinars on NEPU, that the percentage of home dialysis patients is 12 to 13 percent, and that's, that's at best. And so if nephrologists and nurses are exposed to those subspecialties, they're not going to be champions of it, they're not going to encourage it, and they're not going to support uh, education perhaps that encourages patients to think about those options. So I think that's really key. Uh, if there's an opportunity here to expose nurses to more of those options, uh, they can educate their patients and be more confident that uh, these are some viable alternatives. Yeah, those are great points, Mark. So it, it does sound like there is some work to be done here. Uh, and certainly the nurses contribute greatly to the outcomes we're seeing in these payment models. Uh, and just the good overall population health strategy of trying to treat more of these patients at home. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because nurses have always had, you know, in terms of the, the public awareness and public acceptance, nurses have always ranked high in terms of how the public sees them in terms of responsibility and, and uh, um, their ability to do the job and take care of, you know, take care of patients. They've always had good, good numbers, if you will. And so it, the nursing chair is not only about attracting more people to the profession, but creating this new climate or, you know, setting where we think the nurses need to go in the future and, and provide the authority if they feel that that's important to them. Um, they want to be more involved in care decisions and certainly have more exposure to these modality options that now Medicare and CMS are now pushing. So you have government support of these modality options. We need to find the nurses that are interested in those areas and provide the education. I think that's, that's an important piece. Absolutely. Well, Mark, this has been a really enlightening discussion. Uh, great learnings from the A&A &A meeting. Uh, I think a good way to wrap up the topic around the nursing shortage. And I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be plenty more to come with this because this isn't a problem that's gonna solve itself overnight. So Mark, as always, we appreciate having your expertise on NEPHEW. Uh, appreciate you hosting this podcast for us, uh, Nephew Community. Thank you all for tuning in. If you want to stay on the cutting edge of what's happening in the nephrology landscape uh, in regards to just general nephrology business, policy updates, uh, just what's happening out there in the kidney care community, this is a great place to be. Uh, we're always learning from Mark. We're always learning you know, what, what the hot news and issues are. So please stay tuned next month for our next episode. And until then, uh, you all have a great day. Thank you.